Hi, I'm Three Gnomes, an indie game developer currently working on a psychological horror 3D platformer. In the game, you play as a little gingerbread man who explores a hub world house and finds all kinds of little magical hidden worlds for you to explore. In my last devlog, I went through a lot of things, including setting up a lever so that you can raise a bridge, setting up a new enemy type, which is like a hand in a graveyard, creating new ways to access the levels, setting up a death system to restart the level when you die, making new collectibles, creating a flames for the top of the mountain, making an entirely new NPC called Melting Marston from scratch, and without further ado, let's look at what I've been working on since then. So going into this devlog, there were two things that I wanted to get done. First, I wanted to take the idea that I had for this transition level from this sketch to this. I also wanted to set up an enemy type that makes combat more fun. Essentially, I wanted to make something that's fun to kill. So the first thing I did was start making the transition level from scratch. And a lot of people have asked me where you even start with making a level. Well, you start with the basic concept. So this idea was for a transition level that goes between the fridge world, which you've seen, and the freezer level, which will come next. So that's the basic concept. From there, you also got to figure out what purpose it's supposed to serve in terms of mechanics. What do you do? What's the point of it? And this transition level is meant to make you feel like you're actually climbing up to a freezer, but more importantly, it's also supposed to get you a lot more comfortable with the platforming, specifically how your character moves, things like that. So in order to do that, I put a heavy emphasis on platforms. Platformers, platforms. Makes sense. And the platforms themselves are meant to be cute, fun things that have to do with food. So I made a quick sketch of the basic layout of the level, including little diagrams of the types of things that'll need to be made for the level. And then I started making it, which is a whole bunch of steps. So we'll stop with the counting. So the very first thing I did was create a new scene and add a skybox to it. This is the most basic thing that you do. And from there, I knew I wanted it to have a pink feel, so I started playing around with the colors of the skybox that I had put in. And while I had a very clear idea of wanting it to be pink, I eventually realized that what I have available right now wasn't going to work, so I just kind of popped it back to a normal skybox and moved on from there. Next, I took the prefabs that I had made for the character and some of the other things in the game, and I just kind of slapped that into the scene. So you do have a player character that works, it's just he literally has nothing to interact with. And in fact, if you pressed play, he would just fall forever. So now I had to look at my sketch and start using that as a basis to make things in the level. So as you can kind of make out, the first thing that you start on is a basic plate. So I just opened up Blender and got to work on making that. Really simple, I've made several before. Then I popped it in Unity, made sure you could run around on it, and then, because it looked really basic, I needed to mess with the materials to make sure that it would look nice and shiny and reflective, which just makes the whole scene look a lot better. And this is probably a good time to look at my Discord, because I actually live-streamed myself making the next part of the level, which is just a couple of graham crackers and putting them in unity and making them move. So I showed the process of that there. So I'll link my Discord below, it's a great community, you should definitely join it. You'll get to see exclusive stuff, and you'll get to talk to me anytime you want. Show, show me your art, you know, it's a fun place to be. Anyways, I did that there, so the graham crackers are in. From there, I had to make a lot more stuff. I made the macaroons, the cinnamon rolls, and the donuts with the suckers sticking out of them, which was pretty complicated because the actual heads of the suckers needed to turn separately from the donuts that you would always be able to stand on them. They always needed to be essentially flat side up. Next, I did a live stream for this YouTube channel, actually, that you can just go and watch now if you're interested. In that live stream for YouTube, I added some of the macaroons to the level, and I made an entire plate of pancakes with syrup on it, and even a spat of butter on top that you're meant to be able to jump on. When I added the macaroons in the live stream, I originally had them set up where you kind of just land on them and you can move around on them like typical platforms, and then I had them move to give you a little bit of difficulty getting on them. However, ultimately playing it, I decided I didn't quite like how that feels, so then I had the idea of making them bounce pads so that you can just keep a lot of momentum when you're going through the first part of this level and that automatically felt a lot more fun however when I first set it up I did have the bounce height set really high so when you first jumped on it it would shoot you up pretty much basically to the plate already so there was barely any platform needed so I had to lower the bounce height down quite a bit to just make it a little bounce to the next one instead of sending you flying off into space <laughs> I'd also eventually move them into the shape of a staircase, but that is more than enough about macaroons. Let's talk about adding the donut to the scene. So I imported the mesh and the textures and the animations and slapped it into the scene and then I began resizing it so that it would actually be big enough to serve as a spinning platform to raise you up to another level. And then I pressed play and it was gone. And I looked around for a little bit, and it was, for some reason, all the way down here. 
and I wasn't sure why. Mmm, donuts. So essentially I realized if I took the animation out of the prefab, I could just edit it to completely remove the location, which was what was teleporting it to the other side of the map. With that gone, it was now in place. However, I still had another problem to solve because the heads of the lollipop were also supposed to have animation attached to them. And this took a lot of fiddling and it also made me realize that I have almost no experience with multiple objects that are part of the same prefab that have different animations. If it's all part of the same prefab, Unity does not want to play separate animations for it. And after getting very frustrated, I briefly toyed with the idea of just making the sucker head one of the round ones that would be easier for you to just kind of jump on. But I took a deep breath, I did some research, I looked into things, and I eventually realized the way to fix this was that I needed to create custom animations in Unity for the heads of the lollipop. And I had to make this animation inside the animation for the donut itself. And that solved my problem. Now the donut was working exactly how I wanted it to. And it was only a little bit of a massive headache to figure out. But that's a game dev, baby. <laughs> that was stupid. At this point, my girlfriend looked at the things I'd been doing and decided that she wanted to help. She wanted me to guide her through making something in Blender, which was super fun. She wanted to make the cinnamon roll, but I'd already made that. So she decided to help me make my little marshmallow friend, who she named Kevin. And Kevin is meant to be the first NPC that you'll talk to in this transition level we've been making. He'll be the one that'll maybe inform you for the first time that you can even double jump. So he's kind of important. So now he was made, but I wanted to get back to actually making the level. And I definitely did not forget to put him in later. I 100% did that. I didn't put him in. So the next thing I added in was the cinnamon rolls. I gave them each a really simple little animation that they could go through and made them larger platforms that you can walk across and then tried it out, and it was everything I wanted it to be. No problems with this one. You'd almost think I'm getting the hang of this game dev thing. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Anyway, I would make the cinnamon roll bottoms less reflective later. Then I took the stack of pancakes and put them on a plate and put coins around it, and then I made the butter pads actually make you bounce into the air. I used some of the pieces that I had before to extend the level out, which was always the plan, and then I added in the chocolate bars, which I don't have a fancy clip of me editing in Blender. You get the idea. We're really zipping along now. What's up next? Uh, a cup of hot cocoa. And the idea of this is that it's really large and you have to jump from marshmallow to marshmallow that's moving back and forth in the cup to get across. And if you followed the hot cocoa, obviously you die painfully. So I put it in place and then, using what I learned earlier from the donut and the lollipops, I made a combined animation to make the marshmallows move back and forth. And now you had a dangerous cup of hot cocoa that you could bounce across. I really hope those aren't little dead Kevins in there. Oh god. So I continued making more from what I already had, and I want to give a special shout out to my Discord buddy, Custom Chris, who watched my live streams and inspired by the chocolate bars he saw me making that, decided to just send me a blend file for a chocolate bar that he had made, and told me I could put it in the game, so here it is, in the game. So thank you, Custom Chris. Just another reminder to comment, join the Discord, I really love this community and I really value your opinion. I love that I got the opportunity to put something like this in my game because of talented people like you who care about it. So now this small level was pretty much done. I put a cinnamon roll on the final plate before you go to the freezer, and now I just had to create the entrance to the freezer. And to do that, I had to import the freezer file into this game so that I could take the pipe from that and put it right here. I originally planned for it to just be kind of sticking up out of the cinnamon roll, but I didn't like how that looked. So I tried pushing it down where it's like icing to snow didn't like how that looked either, so eventually I just gave up and slapped it on the plate. So now you had an exit to the level, which led directly to the freezer. And while I wasn't really planning to do anything with the freezer right now, I did want to just quick slap some fog on there to give it a more ominous, creepy vibe. At this point, I was happy enough with the level to move on to something a little more exciting. Murder! Specifically, creating an enemy that's a little more fun to kill. So meet Carter who's going to be in the healthy kingdom. He's a carton of milk with a big straw and he tries to hit you. So I just start by animating him in Blender, giving him the few basic animations that you'd expect, a hit, an idle, an attack, a walk, and a death. And then I just threw him into Unity to get started. I was ready to go. I gave him his textures and then I slapped on a rigid body and a capsule collider so that now he could be used as an enemy and slapped around effectively. I just quickly applied his idle animation and then jumped into the game to see how all of this was working without any coding yet. And 
he was doing something. It was weird as hell. Um, so I fiddled around and realized what I did wrong, and now he was standing up straight. But good God, he was still deformed something crazy. It was a scaling issue, which I managed to fix. And finally, my boy Carter was standing and ready to fight. Except all he could do was his idle animation, because that's all I'd put in. So far. This enemy did not need anything complex like a nav mesh, so I started real simple and just made it so that there's a large sphere around him that is triggered when the player enters and makes him follow you. And he faces you as well. However, immediately I ran into problems where once he got close to you or you attacked him, he would just stop moving. I fixed that and then set up a health system for him and allowed him to both attack, be attacked, and die when he takes enough damage. And originally I planned for him to be a two-hit enemy, where you have to hit him twice, at least from the start, with the amount of damage that you do, to kill him. And obviously there were some glitches with that, but it was a start. I sped up some of the animations and decided to make it so that he dies in one hit to make it just really satisfying to hit him real good and watch him die. However, I didn't fix the FSM so that now when you hit him, he would play the hit animation first before he played the death animation. And it kind of looked like it just took a second for him to realize that he had been killed. So that was a pretty quick fix, and now he could be killed in one hit. However, I didn't disable his movement or his attack when he died, so he would just pop back up and keep attacking. Until he disappeared, because because that's what his health FSM programmed him to do five seconds after he was killed. And thankfully that was also a quick fix. And yeah, he was dead. You had killed him. But somehow it just didn't feel like you had really beaten his brains out, which is what I was going for. And so obviously, when you bash someone with a candy cane, blood should come out. So I popped a particle effect on so that now any time that he was hit, blood would pop out. And that felt satisfying. However, Carter was never meant to be a singular enemy, that's why it was a one-hit kill. He was supposed to attack you in swarms. So I spread a bunch of them out and popped into the game to see what it would be like to fight them in groups. However, when I attacked the first one, something happened that blew my frickin' mind. And for a second, I had no idea why this was happening. But continuously, if you were even near them and you swung your attack, you would just kill anyone that was near. And after some trial and error, I eventually realized that this had to do with the detection trigger that he uses to find you and attack you. Because that was a child of the parent object that was tagged as an enemy, when it came into contact with your attack, would trigger and deal damage, thus killing him. So pretty much, if he could see you and you attacked, you would kill him. Pretty broken, not gonna lie. I mean, it looks cool as heck, but it's broken. So I had to fix it. Unfortunately, that meant I had to make a lot of changes to the way this entire thing was set up. I had to take the big sphere collider that lets him know where the player is and track and follow and attack him, and I had to move that so that it's no longer a child of him. And so to do this, I made a different parent object and made both Carter and the detector sphere children of that separately. However, I kept most of the FSM on Carter instead of this overarching parent. And I thought that would work fine, so I hopped into the game and... I don't know why I honestly expected that to work. I realized that this was happening because the parent object that I'd created to hold both of these parts that make up Carter had a different origin point than either of them. And so when it moved, it would move in relation to the new parent object's origin that I'd created, which was nowhere near Toby. So I just synced all that up to the same position, and it was now working pretty much perfectly. At least I thought. However, when I got into the game, I realized that the detector I'd put around him so that he could follow you did not move with him anymore. So his detection range was always in one place, and you could just move in and out of that, and he would stop following you. And at first, I thought that was an issue, and I was going to have to restart this entire thing, but then I realized that for other enemies, this might not work, but for Carter, this was fine. He was literally just guarding this little area, and that was kind of his purpose, always. So by leaving it like this, it kind of just felt like when you left the area that he was guarding, he became non-hostile to you. It's not a bug, it's a feature. So this setup would work fine. However, while testing this out, I discovered that he had magical powers to walk on air. And believe it or not, I had not intended him to be an airbender. I just forgot to move his rigid body and give him gravity. So he was no longer tethered to the laws of man. Thankfully, that was another quick fix. So I did a little more fine-tuning and extended his detector range so that it was pretty much everywhere around the castle. So if you're anywhere on that island, he'll try and get you. But if you leave, he's like, alright, we cool. And now, I was pretty sure I had him finally set up exactly how I wanted, so I copied him all over the place again and tried one more time. 
to see how it was when he attacked in a group. And it was so much fun beating these things to death. Have I mentioned this is a horror game in a while? So now I had enemies that were actually a little challenging and really fun to fight and kill. I mean, I'm still a new indie game developer, and seeing something like this come to life and playing it is so incredibly exciting for me. So now that I had him done, it was time to pop him into a prefab and see if he would work in the transition level that I'd been making. So I put him up on that second plate that you're able to jump up to, and I ran up to challenge him. And he... Hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. Hello, my ragdom gal. Okay. <laughs> So, he did that. Um, I quickly realized that the way that the prefab was made, it wasn't able to track the player as the object he's supposed to be following, so I had to manually input that into the prefab, and now I could put this enemy all over the level. And jumping through this level that I'd just made and fighting an enemy that I had just created from scratch was honestly so exciting for me. And I was almost done, but there was just a couple more things I wanted to do. So first, there's this cup of hot cocoa here that you're supposed to jump through, and you bounce off the marshmallows to get to the other side. However, to really give the feel that this was hot cocoa, I wanted steam to be coming up off of it, which would also make the platforming across the marshmallows there just a little more difficult, as your vision was a little impaired. Perfect. The final thing I did was actually at the prompting of my girlfriend. If you'll remember, at the very beginning of this devlog, I said that I wanted this entire transition level to have a pink skybox. However, by the time I had finished the entire level, I had gotten so used to the normal blue skybox that I had just accepted that's what it's gonna be. And my girlfriend prompted me that I should go with my original vision and find a skybox that fit my original vision. And I went to the Unity store and I actually found one for free. And for those wondering, I do make all of my own assets except for my skyboxes. So I put that in and it was perfect. It was exactly what I wanted. And that just kind of served as a reminder to me to keep your vision for what you wanna make in mind and try not to settle for anything less just because you got comfortable with the easy alternative. Now obviously there's a lot of gray area here and you need to get your game done more than anything else, but when you can, remember not to lose what you originally wanted for your game because your vision is everything as a solo indie game developer. And that's what I've been working on the last few weeks. You'll see art on the screen here. All of that comes from my Discord. A lot of talented people there. You should join. So if you send me fan art, it's very likely it'll end up in one of my devlogs and people will see it. You can also send me your Instagram, Twitter, whatever handle you want to use, even YouTube, and I'll tag it. So join the Discord. Send me art. You should also make sure you like and subscribe. And I'm still trying to figure out what my sign-off for this should be. Someone in my Discord gave me a suggestion, but I wasn't able to find it. So I'm just going to use the last thing that was sent in the general chat of my Discord as my sign-off today. So I'm Three Gnomes, and Megamind is the definition of a Chad. Alright, peace guys.